Once we have seen the harms that animals typically suffer in the wild, we can take a look at some of the ways in which they are currently being helped. These don't include all the ways they can be helped or in which we could help them. In the third module of this course, we'll see that there are several other ways in which it can be possible to help animals and in which we can gain more knowledge about how. However, in this and in the next two videos, we will take a look at some of the ways animals are being helped. In this one, we will start by looking at some examples of rescues of animals trapped in different ways in the wild or who were threatened by natural disasters. Animals often suffer accidents and injuries in the wild. They may be injured by predators or in interspecific conflicts over territory or mating, burned by wildfires or frozen by sudden frosts, trapped by difficult terrain such as mud ponds or frozen lakes and face painful lingering deaths, or they might simply have an accident in the normal course of living their lives, just as humans do. They find themselves almost helpless against stronger animals, extreme weather conditions and natural traps. Nevertheless, humans do sometimes manage to rescue injured or trapped animals, even in difficult circumstances. Large mammals, such as a deer or an elk, can get trapped in frozen lakes. They may cross frozen lakes in search of food, only to fall into the water when the ice breaks underneath them. If the ice isn't solid, then their efforts to get out of the water simply break off more ice, leaving them trapped in the icy water. Unable to free themselves, they may die from hypothermia. Symptoms of hypothermia in mammals include shivering, confusion, lethargy, and weakness, and reduced heart rate, respiration, and blood pressure, and eventually unconsciousness and death. Alternatively, they may die from shock, organ failure, exhaustion, drowning, starvation, being eaten by other animals, or as a consequence of the injuries they incur as they struggle to break free. Sometimes, even if the ice beneath them doesn't break, they can lose their footing on the frozen surface. Unable to regain their footing, they can be trapped on the ice far from land. Many cases have been documented of rescues of animals from these kinds of situations. Animals in cold climates may become trapped on ice floes and end up floating far from the coast, stranded until the ice melts and they drown or die of hypothermia in the freezing waters. Sometimes it is possible to help these animals. Whales can become trapped by sea ice too, as the ice thickens around them, whales can be cut off from the deeper water. When this happens, they can drown, suffocate, or starve to death. Though rarer than beachings, the rate at which whales become trapped by ice seems to be increasing. Rescuing whales trapped by ice is often more difficult than rescuing beached whales, though there have been successful rescues involving ice-breaking ships, de-icing machines, helicopter rescues, and using chainsaws to keep breathing holes open. There are documented cases of rescues of animals trapped in mud ponds. This happens most frequently to large animals, such as elephants. Elephants frequently bathe in mud ponds in order to protect their skin from insects or the sun or simply because it feels good. Sometimes they become stuck in the mud. In these situations, they can drown, suffocate, starve to death, or be slowly eaten alive by other animals. Birds, even those who can fly, can become trapped in mud. They too can often be saved. Cetaceans, such as dolphins or whales, can sometimes become disoriented and end up stranded on beaches. In such situations, it's almost inevitable that the animals will die. Moreover, traditionally, when they were trapped in this way without any possible means of defending themselves, humans would often hack them to pieces for their flesh and blubber. Recently, however, attitudes towards these animals have changed, and in some cases, human beings do help them. And although not always, we sometimes succeed in saving their lives. Other animals may need to be rescued when they're the victims of natural disasters, just as humans and domesticated animals would be in their situation. They may be washed away or drowned by floods, battered by hurricanes, or buried by landslides, avalanches, and earthquakes. Many animals die in such natural disasters. In many cases, it would be possible to save them if only humans chose to do so. However, the plight of animals in the wild affected by natural disasters is generally ignored. Fortunately, though, this isn't always the case. There are many cases in which human beings have helped animals in such situations. These cases demonstrate that humans are both willing and able to help animals threatened by natural disasters. 
Furthermore, there are some signs that the general public is starting to become more concerned about the suffering of animals in the wild caught up in natural disasters. Fires occur regularly in nature. Some are started by human beings, either accidentally or deliberately. Others have natural causes. Fires can start naturally due to lightning, volcanoes, and earthquakes. Of course, how a fire starts is beside the point if what we care about is the animals. Our primary concern then will be to help prevent the suffering and death of animals caught in the fire. It is sometimes possible to help them, and in fact there are many cases in which this has already been done. There have also been cases in which wild animals have been helped or rescued from fires or the effects of fire. Efforts are often carried out with a focus on animals that people like or that are more visible, but this does show how it is possible to help these animals. For example, there are many stories of koalas being rescued from wildfires. Because they are slow moving, they cannot effectively flee from fires. They also have poor immune systems, which means that if they sustain burn injuries, they are likely to die from infection. Hundreds of koalas die in Australian wildfires every year. Rescuing them may be easier than rescuing others who are smaller or more difficult to catch, so people who might not be able to save other animals have saved them. Another example took place in the massive wildfires in Bolivia in 2019, resulting in many animals being saved. It's also possible to help animals in the wild in simpler ways. For example, during the 2019 wildfires in southern Australia, Wild Care Australia Incorporated, an organization that rescues and rehabilitates wild animals, encouraged people living in the affected areas to leave out bowls of water for wild animals to have access to. It's a small effort for humans, but to an injured and disoriented animal, it might be the difference between life and death. There are many cases where animals have been saved during floods. An example of this took place in Kazaranga National Park in India. The park is located in the Assam region, which is prone to regular severe flooding. The region is surrounded by hills, so when there is heavy rainfall, it rushes down the hills, flooding the plains, including the national park. Floods in 2019 killed around 200 animals, including deer, rhinos, buffaloes, boar, porcupines, and an elephant. Rescue workers in boats and all-terrain vehicles managed to rescue 64 animals from the floods, including deer, rhinos, reptiles, and birds. A more systematic intervention was the construction of 33 artificial highlands within the park. These areas of high land have allowed animals to more easily find refuge from the rising waters. The construction of the highlands is credited with reducing the death toll from the annual floods. Floods in 2017 killed over 400 animals, compared to around 200 in 2019. Independent organizations have also often played a role in rescuing animals in these situations. One example of this is when torrential rainfall caused extensive flooding in Arlington County in Virginia in 2019. Because of the time of year, many wild animals were orphaned by the storm as they were thrown from their nests or separated from their parents by the floodwaters. Rescue workers from the Animal Welfare League of Arlington were able to save dozens of animals, including deer and dozens of orphaned birds and squirrels. In some cases, people acting independently, without the aid of organizations or governmental agencies, can take action to help animals. Here's one example. Flash flooding in Mississippi in 2016 put many animals at risk of drowning. Two brothers noticed animals escaping from the flooded woods into a dry pasture in front of their house. They had a small boat and decided to use it to rescue animals trapped by the floods. Driving across the flooded fields to the woods, they rescued several mice, shrews, and rabbits, once in the woods, they got into the small boat and searched for animals trapped by the rising waters. They managed to rescue several opossums and armadillos, releasing them after the floodwaters begin to subside. Their story shows that it is perfectly possible for just a couple of people to rescue animals in difficulty. Animals have been saved from natural disasters of many kinds, such as hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, landslides, avalanches, and volcanoes. Hurricanes are devastating for animals in the wild. Unlike human beings and their companion animals, animals living in the wild generally don't have shelter sufficient to cope with the impact of a hurricane. In 2019, in Walterboro, South Carolina, an animal sanctuary cared for hundreds of animals injured, displaced, orphaned, or otherwise impacted by Hurricane Dorian. Injuries include broken legs, head trauma, and pulmonary aspiration requiring immediate antibiotic treatment. The 2018 tsunami in Indonesia washed sea turtles onto the shore, leaving some stranded up to a kilometer from the sea. 
rescue workers created makeshift stretchers to carry them back to the sea. Volcanic eruptions kill animals directly by burying them in lava and ash and can harm animals caught in the vicinity. They can be burned by falling ash or they can become sick from ingesting ash, usually by eating ash-covered grass or inhaling it. After a 2018 eruption in the Philippines, many domesticated animals were at risk of injury, sickness, hunger, or death. World Animal Protection evacuated terrestrial animals from dangerous areas and provided food and medical treatment to those who required it. Marine animals are also affected by eruptions as lava sheds small particles after it comes in contact with water, which are harmful to aquatic animals with gills. Lava flowing into the water can also increase acidity levels, which may be harmful to marine animals in the region. Larger marine animals like sea turtles can be spotted from the air and rescued, or rescued from nearby shores that have not yet been affected by the eruption. The examples I've just mentioned demonstrate that humans are able to rescue animals in the wild from a range of natural disasters, disasters which they often cannot cope with without our help. However, for the most part, our rescues focus on domesticated animals rather than those living in the wild. If we reject speciesism, then we must expand our rescue plans to include more animals living in the wild. This also means coming up with new ways of rescuing animals. For example, how do we rescue fish in a lake or tide pool that is in danger of being covered over or boiled by lava? How do we protect animals from earthquakes, which give little to no warning beforehand? In the next video, we will see other ways animals in the wild can be helped.